Now, this video will hold you accountable, but it also is going to show you some things where that it may just, I don't want to say out of your control, but it's definitely not helping you and you might not have considered it. And now that you are considering it and I'm bringing it to the forefront, you might be like, wow, let me work on this. Okay. But first, hey friend, welcome to my channel, Cream Elude Mental Gems. This channel is dedicated to leveling up in all areas of your life. So let us learn together, read together, but most importantly, grow together. Now, without further ado, let's get into this video. So let's start with number one. Number one is that you are angry with yourself. I know this won't apply to everyone. There's various ones that we will talk about, but for someone watching, you are angry with yourself and this is why you can't seem to change, okay? What do I mean by that? You have low self-worth, low self-esteem, you don't believe you can, therefore you cannot, no matter how much you try, if something happens along the way, and when I say change, it could be for anything, just to change your life for the better, whether it's the weight you wanted to lose, the job you wanted to go after, or the career path, that new thing you wanted to do, those bad habits that you wanted to let go of, whatever it is, you really just have low self esteem if you are angry with yourself you have not forgiven yourself and you're talking down to yourself and all of those things you are always going to feel that it's not worthy to continue in the road of change okay now the second one is you haven't researched enough how to even get the results for the change that you need to get a lot of times we have the right intentions we have the right motivation and stuff but you didn't research what you need to do to necessarily get to this point. Say, for instance, you want to let go of some bad habits. There's a lot of research that comes into even breaking bad habits. For instance, if it's sobriety, you know, whatever the substance is that got a hold on you. So if it's sobriety, you say, hey, I want to stop drinking alcohol. And to you, you think it's just as easy. Hey, I just say it, you know, but if you're an alcoholic, you can't just say I'm going to stop drinking alcohol and it just happened. For some people, it can. Cold turkey, all of that. Great, but not everyone works like that there's a whole psychological thing with it and you have to get educated on that for me when I wanted to stop I was very annoyed and angry with myself when I couldn't stop I wouldn't say I was like an alcoholic alcoholic but I really didn't want to drink and I knew it was not good for me but I was annoyed at how easy it could be for me to just have another drink and I started to be angry with myself which goes back to the first one because like why can't I but it's because you haven't educated yourself and so I started to educate myself on just sobriety and drinking and what it does to the body knowing like if I continue here's what will happen to my body and the more I was educated on the negatives of it it just turned me off to it and then also you know watching videos reading books I put some books on here for you guys on how to change and how to grow how to have discipline etc no matter what it is I started to educate myself just around whatever it is because yeah I'm giving the example of alcohol but it could be something else and it could be an intimacy issue if you have an issue with sleeping with people and stuff like that or attracting bad relationships for yourself or being in battered situations and you're like why do I keep attracting this why can't I change and have myself like you know every time you talk like that your self-worth go down and you feel like this is all I'm worthy of because I just can't seem to get out of the loophole but once you start educating yourself on DV you start educating yourself on women who escaped and the hard work that comes into it the like you know there's a lot to be educated and get motivation from other people then you start to realize oh my goodness there's so much that goes into this I'm not alone on this and a lot of people struggle too and it's a journey. Life is a journey, not a destination. You never really fully arrive, you know, but when you expect and you have these high expectations on how it should be, that's when you start to talk down to yourself and be really depressed and sad, etc. And you start to think like, you know what, like, I'm not good enough, like blah, blah, blah. Like you start to really speak negatively to yourself. So educate yourself on whatever it is, habits you want to break, discipline. Like if you want to lose weight, you can't just, hey, I'm going to lose weight. And you determine that you want to change, you want to lose the weight, but you know nothing about what foods to eat for your body, what exercises to do. Like you just go to the gym. You're not even lifting right. You know, you're breaking your back, you're in pain, and then you give up. You didn't educate yourself. So 
educate yourself on what's the right workouts. If I want, I'm not necessarily trying to lose weight. I just want a big booty. Then what exercises could I do for my glutes specifically, you know, to target those areas? If your areas is your arms and your stomach and maybe, you know, your face, what diet will help bring down my body fat over time to where, you know, I could slim down my face and down my arms, etc. There's a lot of work that comes into the change. Change cannot come without education. It's just one of the key things that people neglect a lot. And that's just the tough reality of it. You need education to start to see change. The third is you can't stay motivated. You really can't stay motivated. Why can't you stay motivated? Because of education, angry with yourself, feeling like you're not worth it, etc. All of those things can make you lose motivation. Or maybe you just had a bad day, gloomy. Like if you're a woman, you know, like on we have different phases on our menstruation where we might be more motivated than other days. But because you don't have the education to know, like there's a little Bible verse that says, my people perish because of lack of knowledge, right? Which we would say education. Because I didn't always know about the phases. I'm speaking to myself first. So when I'm going through some phases in my menstruation where I'm just not as motivated, the energy, all of this, I just want to eat more. Like I could have been doing so great with my diet the weeks before. And then like the week before my period, I'm just like a bottomless pit that just wants to eat, 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 eat. And I'm just so annoyed with myself. Like, why can't I control myself or fast longer, you know, in these periods? But then when I learned about the phases with the woman's body, I'm like, oh, okay, this makes sense. I'm more gentle with myself. I'm kind with myself. And I'm able to jump right back instead of completely giving up because I went and I educated myself. You know, this is one of the things, everything that I will say here will go back to being educated, okay, on the change that you want. But because I didn't understand a body, I just would lose motivation a lot. And there's a lot of other factors where you don't have to be a woman that can make you lose motivation. Like if you didn't sleep well, that the night before, it's been a week you haven't slept well because there's a lot of factors going around. Maybe there's an exam, this, and that, so much is going on, relationship problems, whatever. And you lose motivation for a specific thing that you want to change because there's no sleep. Or you've been eating a lot of processed foods, junky foods, drinking alcohol, all of that stuff. And then you're wondering why you lost a little bit of motivation. It's not necessary because you suck. There were some factors out there that you didn't understand how they play a role into why you're not really seeing the results of the change that you want. So once you know what those factors are that are making you not motivated, is it just pure laziness where you're just laying on the couch? And sometimes laziness is not just laziness. Are you depressed? Do you have anxiety? Do you, you know, see doom and gloom in the world all the time? If you're depressed, I guarantee you, you're not going to stay motivated. You might find that you're on the couch, you just sleep all the time. You really are dealing with depression. Sometimes it is depression and not just laziness. Sometimes it is laziness. But be aware and call yourself out. Okay, I'm not motivated and can't seem to change because I am lazy. There are times where I could be doing this and I'd rather do this. It's not that I'm depressed, blah, blah, but you have to be very, very honest with yourself and keep it real. The other thing, which is four, I believe I lost track, <laughs> the influences that you have around you. What influences do you have around you? A lot of times we want to change. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak because of all the temptations we allow to be around us. Say, for instance, you want to be disciplined and lose weight, but your friends want to eat out all the time. They want to go to taco joints. They want to go eat burgers, whatever. You know how to eat and they want to go out three times a week or whatever. You have to be like, okay, um, I'm not cutting my friends off, but I need to set a boundary. Maybe I'll go out once a week with them and then I'll maybe pick the place when we go out this time or I'll ask them to be mindful to go to healthier places like places where I could find a healthier option you know but sometimes it is the environment say you want to change and have more discipline in your spiritual life but you're around people that mm, is not in alignment with you then that change will never happen say academically your grades are suffering you're failing in school and you're like I want to get my grades up etc and and do this but your influences, your circle, they're not academics. They're they are not into academia or anything like that. You're more hanging around people that's just more of the party, more of the aesthetics of college, but not really career driven or anything like that. They're not going to take it seriously or say you're super ambitious and you're already in the work field and you're working, but your environment, they're not as ambitious. They're okay with com being complacent and they get a little annoyed with you when you don't have enough time to hang out or do certain things because they're not on the same mission as you and they cannot understand your grind or hustle. It becomes a 
source of annoyance for them. So you have to consider your social circles, who's around you. And this is probably one of the reasons why you cannot seem to change. Next is discipline. Discipline is definitely um, something that you, you can't really teach. You just have to have in you. You have to pray for it. You have to want it. And how do you get discipline for me? I believe in rock bottom so much. Like rock bottom is the biggest motivator to getting your life together, to changing, to actually moving forward. You have to be down so bad that you're like, oh my goodness. Because some people could be on rock bottom and never even aware that they're in their rock bottom. Like they're just, okay, well, that's it. And you know, they take their lives and they're gone. But you have to be in rock bottom where you're so aware that you're in rock bottom that you're like, look at the state that I'm in. I'm not happy with this. Whether it's, hey, you had a goal to move into a better neighborhood by this age and you're still in this crazy neighborhood and rock bottom for you is when you try to go in your car and you notice they done took your tires. They done robbed you of your tires and I cannot make it to work. Or listen, there's some neighborhoods that will even drain you of your gas. Like they'll literally take the gas out of your car. Okay. And then you're like, oh my goodness, I have to leave. You know, it could be something like this. Now you can't go to work. You got to pick up a ride or find a bus. And now it's a struggle. It's this and that. And you're just so, you're crying, you're upset. And you're like, you know what? Change got to come. And then now that motivation of rock bottom says, I need another side hustle. I need to figure out how to multiply my income so that I can, you know, but what can I do? Now the conversation is happening and now you're willing and now you're hungry for it. You're looking for it. You're determined. And then you get out of your situation. But sometimes if bad things don't happen, we never feel uncomfortable enough to change, which brings me to my next one, which is you're too comfortable. You're too comfortable. So you might want to change some habits or change some aspects of your life, but it's it seems like it's never happening because you're too comfortable. You haven't hit rock bottom. You're so complacent because you feel at ease where you're at and no one is telling you any better. No one's holding your feet to the fire. No one's holding you accountable. You're just like chilling, okay? <laughs> yeah, you're definitely not going to get too far if you're comfortable, you know? And then the last, you're directionless. And by directionless, maybe that you got the knowledge now. You went to research, you went to do this, you know, because education is not enough if there's no direction, right? It's like a doctor going to, I mean, an aspiring doctor going to medical school and they get the degree and everything. They know they want to be a doctor. They know blah, blah, blah. They get all the education, but then after they leave school, they never quite become a doctor. And then you'll have a lot of people that go into school in a specific um, career path. Like they'll take up, you know, whatever. And they never really work on their degrees. They never laid out a plan, like no direction. Education without a plan, knowing the knowledge without a plan, writing it out and making it clear and knowing where you want to go, you're aiming like you're directionless you're just like aiming with no target in sight like you don't know where it may land you know so it's not enough to just say i want to change i want to lose weight i know the knowledge but you don't have no meal prep you can know what to eat darling how many of you guys know what you should eat and shouldn't eat but you end up eating what you shouldn't eat because you didn't meal prep or you didn't plan already ahead so now that hunger is hitting you and you're just grabbing whatever that's what I mean by being directionless. Or you know that, hey, I shouldn't, I should be studying, I should be da da da, but you're not allocating the time. You don't have a structure or a schedule for yourself to know, okay, this is study time, this is workout time, this is it. Like you feel like your life is chaotic, but you have no structure, you have no schedule. You wake up and you take it day by day and you're okay with it. And then now at the end of the night, you're like, damn, where did the day go? You don't feel like you're really fully accomplished what you want to do. You refuse to be organized, have some structure and organization. Change comes with that. You can hold yourself accountable when you have a list of to do. I have list everywhere on my phone, everywhere, notebooks. I don't care. Like you'll see it everywhere of stuff that I know I'm supposed to do. When you don't do it, then you hold yourself accountable. Like, dang, I didn't accomplish this. Where did the day go? Like, what, what did I do today? You know, and over time you start holding yourself accountable, but you need to have a direction, a plan for the change. Like it's not enough to just want the change. How are you going to go about applying it? the action behind it, which goes to my last, this is the bonus, putting, applying action. You can have the schedule. How many times you wrote out a schedule or a to-do list and you didn't fulfill it? 
You did not fulfill it because you're not putting the action behind exactly what you want to do. It's not enough for us to just speak. We must, we must act, right? You can speak all this over your life, but you must act. You must act. You must have action behind your plans. Like once you write your schedule, you know what you want to do. You know how you want to change. Where's the plan? There's a plan. Where's the action? Because faith without works is dead, right? Um, that's what it says. Faith without action is dead. That's the literal, like, simple English definition of it. Faith without works is dead. It's not enough to just believe in all of that feel-good stuff. You don't change because you get motivated. You believe. You're pumped. And then you do nothing after. And you expect it to just come to you. No, it doesn't work that way. Nothing in life comes easy. There's a plan. There's discipline for everything. So you have to figure that out. But this is why you won't change. And if you guys have any bonus ones, I'll leave some in the comments. And I do always, always, I will always add this, that without God, you, listen, okay? Change is possible with him. But even with him, he tells you faith without works is dead. So put your best foot forward. Do what you have to do. Hold yourself accountable. But sometimes it's just we just don't have the education. We haven't written it out. We haven't prepped, prepared, or anything like that. We just go into things blindly. And we don't have the success that we aim for because we just are not prepared. Comment below any additional ones you guys have. If you watch until the end, leave a fire emoji in the comments. I love you guys so much. Thumbs up. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Yeah.